proper relationship to psychic powers regarding how the display of psychic powers affects people in general let us look at the conduct of the Buddha and his disciples who were exceptionally skilled in psychic powers as mentioned earlier the Buddha clearly disfavored the miracles of performing psychic powers and mind reading but consistently supported and applied the miracle of instruction. Instruction lies at the heart of the Buddha's activities. There were instances, however, when the Buddha performed psychic powers. By looking at these occasions, we can conclude that the Buddha only exercised psychic powers when he was subduing or taming those who possessed these powers. Those who gave great import to these powers, or who with arrogance felt superior to others, so that they would abandon their infatuation with them. He performed psychic powers to subdue psychic powers, to encourage a person who was fascinated in or conceited about them to realize their limitation, and to see things that are superior to them to study and recognize things which the Buddha revealed through the miracle of instruction. This is similar to the aforementioned principle of applying psychic powers in conjunction with instruction, but here the application is limited to those who are intoxicated by psychic powers and who express a stubborn pride when when encountering the Buddha. For example, in the story of subduing the god Brahma. There are some stories of the Buddha's chief disciples combining the display of psychic powers with instruction to people who were fascinated with these powers. For example, the story of Venerable Sariputta instructing Venerable Devadatta's disciples with the miracle of mind reading and similar stories of Venerable Maha Moggallana exercising psychic powers. There are a few stories of monks revealing psychic powers to help people, but there is not a single instance in the Pali Canon of monks exercising these powers as a consequence of people's request for them. There were instances when people made this request because they wanted to witness these powers. The Buddha established a training rule forbidding monks from displaying such powers to lay people, as mentioned earlier. In everyday life, people must live with other human beings and live under ordinary circumstances rather than relying on invisible external forces which have no direct connection to them. Buddhism emphasizes how it is better to train and discipline oneself to develop knowledge and skill so that one can solve problems using ordinary rational methods and reach success through righteous means. The Buddha defined the ability leading to success as a power, ED, which accords with the Buddhist teachings. This ability is twofold material power, uh, misa edi, and spiritual power, dhamma edi, the latter being the leading principle. There are two primary points revealing the limitations of psychic powers, along with all forms of sacred or supernormal forces, revealing that these powers are not of essential importance to Buddhism are not related to the goal of Buddha Dhamma, are unnecessary for walking the Buddhist path and offer no true security or safety. 1. From the perspective of wisdom, supernatural powers cannot directly give rise to wisdom, to the penetration of truth and to an understanding of phenomena as they really are. An example of this limitation is the story of the monk who possessed psychic powers 
and went in search of an answer throughout all realms of existence until they arrived at the realm of Brahma who claims to have created the world yet this monk's quest was in vain a similar story describes the Rishi who unsuccessfully travelled in search of the end of the universe until he died to from the perspective of the mind, psychic powers are unable to truly eliminate mental defilements or to end suffering. When the mind is confused, depressed, agitated or overwhelmed by greed, hatred and delusion, his powers are unable to lead to freedom. Even if one suppresses these negative states of mind through the power of jhana, the solution is only temporary. Whenever one exits the state of concentration and faces ordinary life the defilements return to disturb and harass and to cause suffering even worse psychic powers may be used to serve the defilements as happened in the case of venerable devadatta 